This is review. If you've done the uh, pre-work, this is review. If you're going to do the pre the pre-work after this, which is kind of an interesting concept, doing the pre-work after the work, um, you'll be able to review then. Um, don't worry if you don't get this stuff the first few times you hit it. It's arcane, it's detailed, and we're going to go through it a couple different times. For us to be able to do this, you're going to need to understand a basic premise, and that is you write code over here, and it turns into a user experience over here. The separation of code and experience. Now, it may seem obvious to some of us, but frankly, I've had students who have just never run into that concept before. They, uh, some artists are like, I can't learn how to program. I, I must touch the, the brush myself. I must cook the dish myself. Well, it's essential for you to get used to the idea of, I'm going to type over here, and it's going to change over there. Okay? There's that cycle. Um, you're going to learn about HTML tags elements, attributes, and most of all, delimiters. Delimiters are a big deal. Same thing in CSS. We're going to talk about the building blocks of CSS. Rules, selectors, property names, property values, and again, delimiters. Um, to do this assignment, you're just going to need CodePen in a, in a Chrome browser. As we go along, I'm going to write stuff as if it's patently obvious to everyone. But I would expect you to want to look things up. If you go out on the web, there's a thousands of places where you can learn HTML. There's millions of people who know HTML, and it seems like every one of them has a blog, and they're willing to tell you what they think. Instead of just blindly Googling, things, I would like you to focus on two different resources. Now, you can pick your own, and there are probably better ones than the ones I'm going to request from you, but at least use these two. It's better for you to learn one particular resource or two particular resources and get familiar with them, like always going on the same path to get to the store and come back. Uh, than it is for you to scattershot and, and, and find yourself in a new neighborhood every time you go to find things. The two resources I'd like to recommend to you is uh, the kindergarten of the interwebs, w3schools.com. Uh, it has a bad rap. And for many years, it was well-deserved. Um, it had errors, and it was just a piece of terrible work. Uh, they keep on getting it better and better. What's nice about it is it doesn't go deep, but it gives you a chance to play. So on the left-hand side here, you'll see um, topic areas. And as you drill down, you'll see little snippets of code, and you'll see more information. And then you'll see these places where you can, like, code pen, like the uh, console in Treehouse, like a, many other places, a place where you can play. That's the best way to learn, is to code it yourself and see what's going on. So as approachable as this is, uh, again, you're going to outgrow it really quick. So a place with a little more depth is a place called the Mozilla Developer Network, or MDN. And the way you can get there easily is in the search uh, in a Google search window or a DuckDuckGo search window, uh, search field, go MDN, and then the thing you're looking for, like CSS selector. MDN, CSS selector. I'm looking for a definition of what a CSS selector is. And you'll see in the search results that right up at the top in the Mozilla Developer Network is an article on selectors. So instead of just blindly Googling, what's a selector? Or how is my mom going to tell me about a selector or something? Use MDN, CSS, the topic area, and then some sort of keyword. It'll get you to a pretty informative article. Very trustworthy information. Whereas, frankly, W3Schools has had its uh, problems in the past. The Zilla Developer Network is well-respected. Um, 
to go beyond this. And there's a bunch of interesting stuff that you'll see here. As you get more and more familiar with these two resources, you'll remember where things are, and it'll help you learn faster. Um, to go further than this, you would look up the actual specs for the languages, for HTML, for CSS. And we won't get that far in this class. You will in your profession, but we won't worry about that. Either. So as a classroom technique, I'm going to do things like, somebody tell me the CSS property that sets the background color. And it's not a quiz, it's not a test, it's a prompt for you to go search one of these two places to find the answer to that question and to tell it to the class. See if you can get there faster than anybody else, okay? Um, almost all of the quizzes in this environment are open web. I don't really care whether you know something as much as you know how to find something. I want you to know how to learn something quickly. There's no way you're going to know everything you need to know. So let's know how to move quickly. So getting back to this exercise, here's a couple of resources that you can use as we go through this. And then frankly, if you want to spend some quality time in the bathtub learning about HTML and CSS, this is the thing. It's also a good sopper if it puts you right to sleep at night. There's a UI design paradigm that you'll see very frequently these days. It's called the card user interface pattern. Talk more about what patterns are in the, in the rest of the class. But you'll see it everywhere. Um, the Facebook interface is a series of cards in a stack. The newspaper sites are cards. The reason we like cards here, the reason I like cards here, is it allows us to make these tiny little building blocks that then you can build into a decent user interface. So we're going to start, we're going to learn together how to make a card. How to make a Okay, so go to your code pen, and we're going to start with a tag called an R. Here, let me blow this up so you can see it. If you notice on code pen, I have these little X win X boxes up in here in the right hand corner. I can click on the X and close that pane. So now I just have HTML and CSS. And then the result is down here. If you would prefer, you can use the lower right hand corner down here to switch it so that you can see the components on the left hand side and you can see the result on the right. Whatever is more convenient for you. So I'm going to use an article tag. And I type it as an open and a close article tag. It's web, waving at me to save my pen, so I'm going to do it. Let's take a, a moment and dissect what we just did. I use this open delimiter, angle bracket. I use a tag name, article. It's in a closed delimiter. Those are vocabulary words. This is a tag name. So it'll be important for you to remember. These are delimiters. One of the most common errors that you will run into is you will forget one of the delimiters. Um, there's thousands, well, there's dozens of different kinds of delimiters, and they're always a pain in the patootie. So pay attention to your delimiters. You've got two of them, typically. They define delimits between one thing, uh, I'm here all week, folks, uh, tip your TA. Um, the delimiters plus the tag name, I have no room up here, make a tag. When I say an article tag, I mean the word article plus the two delimiters. Notice I have a closing tag here, down here, slash article. Now, it used to be in XHTML, and you will find some of this stuff out on the web. Uh, that was the previous version of HTML. These closing tags were required. And even if you had something like a BR, a brick tag, you had to kind of put in a pseudo closing tag. 
So these days, not all tanks have closing tags. Not all of them do. It's a little more loosey-goosey now. But if you take this article and then we put a bunch of content in here, whenever I do this, I need this other text. Or a Mipsum, whatever. It's just a bunch of other HTML. This is content. Right? Open tag, closing tag, and content. All of this together, the open tag, the content, and the closing tag, makes this thing an element. Vocabulary terms. I'm going to use these precisely when I remember to do so. And when I ask you what's going on with that article element, I'm not talking about this. I'm talking about this whole thing. So an article element is these open tags and closed tags and uh, its content. Now what's really weird here is that the open tag and the closing tag, they're delimiters too. They limit the, the scope of that article. One of the biggest problems you will have when you're first writing HTML is you're going to mess up your nesting. Um, you're going to put the opening tag here and a closing tag and an opening tag and a closing tag and it's not going to work. What's worse is the browser will try and show you what you think you want and it'll look horrible. You'll have this problem where you're cutting and pasting things and you're cutting and cut and pasting them on because you're not paying attention to your delimiters. When we start editing files, we'll, we'll show you some techniques to make that easy to control. But one of the goals for me in this class is that all of you get to good, be good at cut and paste. You think to yourself, how hard could it be? It's cutting and pasting. Well, when you've got hundreds of lines and thousands of lines and you're taking a big block of code from here and it all looks the same and you're dropping it somewhere else, mistakes happen. So, Get sensitive to it now. Let's pay attention. And you'll have fewer problems later. HTML5 is semantic markup. So can anyone define semantic for me? You can define semantic. I know you can. You have that intelligent look about you. At least you were thinking about something intelligently. Perhaps not HTML, but semantic markup. I can't define it in that context. Excellent. Good answer. Who could uh, I can pick on semantic markup? What is semantic markup? Uh, it's got to do with language, like yeah. the kind of language you're using. Like the meaning of the language. Semantics is meaning. So if you find yourself arguing with your significant other about semantics, well, we're just arguing semantics. It's like, yeah, we're arguing about what do you mean? Why would you say that? Semantic markup means the markup can tell a computer what the information is. The definition of an article element is a piece of information, an atomic piece of information, a piece of information that stands on its own that can be redistributed somewhere else. It's perfect for these tags. So we're going to use an article and then we're going to use an H1 tag. Now here's your first cool thing about code editors. I'm going to forget these delimiters all the time. It's a major problem. So my code editor is going to help me out. I'm just going to type H1 and then hit the tab key. Presto changeo. It gives me a good tag in the front. It gives me a good closing tag at the end. And it repositions my cursor in the middle. You should not type the open bracket and the close bracket. Just type the tag name and hit the tab key. This, <coughs> let's see, I'm going to do every card has a title. Cool. I've got the start of this first card here. This card is a paragraph of text with a link. Okay, so what's the tag that I use for a paragraph of text? P. P, tab. Yeah, loving it. This card has a paragraph of text with a link 
it also has a second sentence. Sentence of text with a link. Okay. So here's some text. I've got a heading. I've got a paragraph. Real good. I'm proud of myself. But I noticed that my little example card, the word paragraph is bolded. How do I make that that word bold? Strong. Strong. We can use strong. Strong tab. And I'm going to put this inside it. Cool. There we go. Now, it used to be that we would use just a B tag, a bold tag. And for a while, uh, people said, don't use those B tags anymore, because that's a rendering thing. That's a style thing. Um, see people going back and forth on that still. I'm not going to worry if you use B tags or strong tags, but the semantic markup uh, is strong. Now, how do I do italics? It looks like second, the word second has to be italics. That I need to turn into italics. What's the, the tag I should use for that? I. I could do that. I. Emphasis is another one. But like I said, I don't care about I's and B's and emphasis and strong. Works for me. And it's rendering it as italic. That's great. We're going to leave the red until later. Now I want to turn this thing into a link, into a link. Now a link is a hyperlink. It's a connection from this page to some other page. And remember, it uses a URL. So what's the tag to create a hyperlink anchor? Pardon? href is one of the attributes in that tag. A. A stands for anchor. So I'm going to do a tab. And what's really cool about this editor is it knows that it, it's not an anchor without an href. Then you were right. It stands for hyperlink ref, uh, uh, reference. So I've got to put a URL in there. I'm going to put a, I don't know, let's put Google in there. Everybody loves Google. Notice I'm making myself what is called an absolute reference. It starts with the protocol. It has two slashes. It has the whole domain name in there. Google. Later on, we'll learn how to make relative references that are much um, better suited to within your own uh, websites. Now, what goes between the open tag and the closing tag? What do I put in there? Whatever text you want people to click on. Exactly. Whatever text. I want people to link in. Now, it's just a style thing for me, but if I have a, a, a link at the end of a sentence, I don't put the period in the link. The reason I don't is I've done a lot of editing on web pages and moving words around, and the link itself moves, and it may not end up at the back at the end of the uh, sentence. So here's the link. What if I want, and if I click on that link, here I'm going to save my pen first, and I click on that link, it's going to replace this whole thing. Does it go? Uh, am I going to go? Am I going to go? Google. Ah, oh, it didn't work. I wonder if CodePen inhabit, inhibits that. Very interesting. Well, to see what's going on here, I'm going to use the debug feature. I went up to the um, I went up to the menu and I went to debug. What debug does with CodePen is it drops it into its own window. And I click on the link, and it searches. Oh, and then it goes to Google. Great. Nice, Google. So there's my link, and it's working. OK. So I need a second paragraph, and frankly, I don't want to use that paragraph. 
I'm just going to put in a dummy paragraph full of dummy text. And here's another cute tip. I do my paragraph and I tab it out so I get a uh, paragraph element. And then I use the word lorem, lor m, and hit tab there. And it gives me this uh, snippet of, of text that you'll see all over the web, which is a way for web developers and web designers to say, there will be text here. Some client will give me text and I'll put it in there. This is just body text. All right, great. This gives me the HTML. Now, let's see. Have I used all of the pieces here? Use the following tags. I've used H1. I've used article. Ooh, I didn't do it right. I want, they said I wanted H1 for the exercise title and H2 for the card title. What's the difference between H1 and H2? Okay, size is a style thing. In terms of the HTML, what's an H1 versus an H2? Yeah. The size of the... No, I don't care about size. Relative importance. Yes. SEO. Yes. H1. Uh, Google looks for an H1 and it expects the text inside the H1 to tell you something about the what the page is about. And it factors that in when people are looking for things. Your H1 is talking to um, robots, frankly. It's also like in an outline, it's the main topic header. Um, and then H2 then is one of the subheadings, one of the subtopics. It used to be that Google only wanted, um, only wanted one H1 on a page, but they go back and forth on that. Uh, what is this called? The exercise one. So here's my title, exercise one on the page. And then each card is supposed to be the subtopic, so I'm going to go in and I'm going to switch H2. Here's another bug you'll run into a lot. You'll change the opening tag, and you won't change the closing tag. And so think to yourself when you make an edit, it, open, close, container, element. Think about what you're doing, and try to remember if you can. Oh, nice code pen telling me to save things. So now you're right. The H1 tends to be bigger because it's more important. The H2s tend to be smaller. But as we'll learn, that's a side effect. We're more concerned about what the meaning is of an H1 and the meaning of the H2. Okay, I've got H1, I've got H2, I've got paragraph. We've got an anchor tag. We're going to leave the UL and LI for later. And we're going to we use some BIs and some strongs and emphasis. Okay. The second link? The sec oh, 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 second link. Thank you. This is why it's good to have somebody else check your code. So I do a, a tab. And oh, let's see. Mm, mm. Well, what would I be without? Selling the dream. Great, so I've got two links now. And I've got to put the thing inside the link. And there we go. Okay, now this doesn't look much like a card. So now let's switch over to CSS.